As kids, we listen to fairy tales and those stories stay with us for the rest of our lives. In any given year, movies are made about these stories and while they can get a bit dark, they are usually very child friendly. But what if we told you that the origins of these stories are brutal? What if you learned that your favorite fairy tale was based on something absolutely horrific? Well, that's often the truth. Little Red Riding Hood so, we all know the story about the girl who is fooled by a wolf. It's rather grim, but as kids, we get through it. In a book called Sons of Cain about serial killers penned by Peter Bronsky, he writes about how crazed killers in the past were sometimes accused of being werewolves. These were especially brutal murders, so society at times said a monster of a man must be behind them. Werewolves were taken seriously, and quite a few people were convicted of being one. Many people back then just couldn't see how anything but a monster could do such terrible things. What we're saying is that this story could have been based on crazed maniacs. Little Red Riding Hood was written shortly after Europe's werewolf epidemic from 1450 to 1650. We saw the first printed version in 1697, although there would be many versions. In this first version, the girl is seduced by the wolf, takes off all her clothes and is basically savaged by the wolf and dies. Vronsky called it a dark and vile horror story. In other versions, the girl is likely based on a person who sells her own body. Some scholars believe that the moral of the story is don't do this or you'll get ripped apart by a wolf. It's a dark, cautionary tale. While in other versions, the grandmother is cut up into small pieces, her blood is drained and turned into a kind of wine, and the girl is tricked into eating and drinking her, and so becomes a cannibal. The language is so strong in that version that we won't utter it today. In yet another version, the girl plays along with the wolf and let's just say the story has a very sexual slant. She actually does a strip tease for the wolf in one of the stories. She also goes to bed with the wolf and before she is brutally killed by him, he has her wicked way with her. Vronsky writes that over the years, we had to sanitize the story because the depravity of Little Red Riding Hood just didn't sit well with more modern folks. As you'll see, we cleaned up a lot of fairy tales. Sleeping Beauty the 17th century version of this story has been called by some people deeply disturbing. You all know the version which involves a curse sending a woman into an eternal sleep and a handsome prince coming to her aid. Well, the original is slightly more horrific. In a 17th century version written by a famous fairy tale writer called Charles Perrault, the beautiful woman is pretty much attacked in her sleep. The man has his way with her. In another version, the same happens to the unfortunate woman, and these are some of the lines. Crying aloud, the king beheld her charms and felt his blood course hotly through his veins. He lifted her in his arms and carried her to a bed, where he gathered the first fruits of love. We think you can understand what actually happened in that scene, and it's not something you'll see in a Disney movie. In that same version, she falls pregnant and has two kids in her sleep. The babies then suck on Sleeping Beauty's fingers to try and wake her, and when she does wake from her coma, she has more trouble. The king then comes back and he wants the kids he helped make. He's married, though, to an evil woman. She doesn't much like the fact that her cheating husband goes to get these kids, at least in one version, and she orders that the kids be killed and then fed to her wretched husband. She does this, and all the while the king does not know what he's eating. As he chomps down on the food, the queen tells him, eat, eat, you're eating of your own. Lots more happens that you just couldn't show to kids today, such as the queen trying to burn Sleeping Beauty to death or Sleeping Beauty taking off all of her clothes. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs We hate to burst your bubble, but this story also has some pretty dark origins. It's likely based on the life of a Bavarian noblewoman in the 16th century called Margarete von Waldeck. She was famed for her beauty and at a young age was sought after by many noblemen. But the story takes shape, according to some scholars, because of child labor. Let us explain. Her father owned a copper mine at the time, and in that mine little children were sent to work. They were the only ones small enough to do the job. The labor was very hard and it said this deformed some of those kids. So we have a beautiful woman and a load of deformed little kids doing hard labor. All these kids lived in one house and they often wore bright hoods. Some of them understandably didn't like the dangerous work and it's said that if any of them got on the wrong side of their employers, they'd be poisoned with nightshade. That's where the poisoned apple comes from. Margareta died at age 21 and it's suspected that she was poisoned. It said her father, who was the king of Spain, opposed her love affair and so he sent assassins to kill her. But even the brother's grim version of the story is real dark. Here are some texts from that. Finally, she summoned a huntsman and said to him, take Snow White out into the woods to a remote spot and stab her to death. As proof that she is dead, bring her lungs and her liver back to me. I shall cook them with salt and eat them. This gives an entirely new meaning to Evil Queen. Snow White gets her revenge on the Evil Queen though and this is how she did it. They put a pair of iron shoes into the fire until they glowed and she had put them on and danced in them. 
Her feet were terribly burned, and she could not stop until she had danced herself to death. Pinocchio The original version of Pinocchio was written by a man called Carlo Collodi. He never had kids, and it's said that he hated them. In this version, all the kids in the story are terrible, greedy, the worst things on earth, except for the naughty protagonist Pinocchio. Experts say that the bad behavior of the puppet and all the other kids in the story is not supposed to be endearing. It's a warning that kids are little devils, which at the time in history a lot of people really believed. In one version, he wrote that the puppet is strung up and hanged on a tree. You can see just how this man hated children. This is some of the text from The Hanging of Pinocchio. A tempestuous northerly wind began to blow and roar angrily, and it beat the poor puppet from side to side, making him swing violently, like the clatter of a bell ringing for a wedding, and the swinging gave him atrocious spasms. Yeah, that's not exactly child-friendly. The moral of the story is that if you're naughty, you will be tortured and then murdered. So this is quite extreme reading. Pinocchio is just not nice at all. He's a proper little rascal, and he kills the talking cricket with a hammer. He often gets beat for his naughtiness, with the writer saying after one transgression, the puppet is tortured and is so giddy with pain that stars of every color danced before his eyes. In other scenes, he's humiliated and faces greater pains. It reads like the Marquis de Sade, but for children. This is basically a very extreme cautionary tale and is no doubt a story of sadism. They didn't have PTSD back then, well, at least they didn't have a term for it, but we imagine after reading the story, a lot of kids suffered from it. You might have seen some of our other shows in which we referenced author Steven Pinker's book on historical violence called The Better Angels of Our Nature. Pinker details how before we had children's rights, the little devils grew up amid a lot of violence. The story of Pinocchio stands as a testament to that. Little Jack Horner This is such a nice nursery rhyme. Here it is. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, eating his Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I! What could possibly be dark about that? Mm -hmm. Well, some people think it was based on a guy called Thomas Horner. He was the steward of a man who was the last <laughs> abbot of Glastonbury before King Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries in England. The abbot's name was Richard Whitting. As the story goes, Whitting sent Horner to London to meet the king. With him was a great big pie, and hidden in the pie were the deeds to lots of country manors. Whitting didn't want the king to nationalize the church lands. The gift was supposed to impress Henry, so he wouldn't do that. It's said little Horner actually actually put his hands in the pie and took one of the manners for himself. As for Mr. Whitting, he was later hanged, drawn, quartered, and his head was removed and stuck on a gate. Cinderella In the 17th century version of this tale, written by Italian writer Giambattista Basile, Cinderella is basically a contract killer. She's told by a governess to kill her own mother, which she does. In the writer's words, she snaps her stepmother's neck with the lid of a dressing trunk. The governess then marries the father, and Cinderella is sent to work in the kitchens. This version then goes like the story we know. She loses a slipper and meets a dashing prince, but there's an earlier version written in Scotland, and that was called Russian Koti. In that story, the stepmother cuts off little bits of Cinderella's feet, so they'll be too deformed to fit the slipper. In yet another version, the evil sisters mutilate themselves and birds peck out their eyes. Pied Piper of Hamelin this is the story you all know of the guy that played a pipe and lured rats away from the town of Hamlin. The town folks, though, didn't actually pay him, so he lured the children away too. In some versions, he brings the children back when the money has been paid, but in other versions, he kills most of the kids by drowning them. It's actually written that this town in the 14th century did have a lot of kids that suddenly went missing. They might have simply starved to death, but some theories suggest the kids were lured away by pagans to perform ritual dancing. They were then danced to death. Other theories say these kids were forced to emigrate en masse. Life was tough back then and there's evidence of something called dancing mania happening around Europe between the 14th and 17th centuries. Basically, a number of people would just start dancing really erratically. This is sometimes called mass psychogenic illness and involves lots of people coming down with the same malady at the same time. It's literally collective madness. In this case, people would dance until they collapsed from exhaustion. It was kind of a crazy rave for the hysterical. We don't know if this is what happened to the missing kids of Hamlet, but you can be sure sure that the Pied Piper story has some dark origins. Just out of interest, we tried to find modern examples of mass hysteria and we didn't come up empty-handed. The Guardian reported in 2015 that it happened at a school in the UK. One day, girls at the school just started fainting. One of the students said people were just falling like dominoes, but the police and fire department could find no reason for this. It turned out that it was mass psychogenic illness. The Guardian interviewed a psychiatrist who said that it was actually quite common and schools are where it seems to happen a lot. We found cases in countries around the world where this occurred, and it seemed to happen to females more than males. 
Sometimes food or drink is at first blamed, but that wasn't the case at all. In one of the stranger cases, a bunch of girls in the school in New York in 2011 developed facial tics, but it was just hysteria, not a medical problem. So which of these tales do you think is the most horrific? Do you think Hollywood should try and recreate the originals? Tell us in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Why Life During the Dark Ages Sucked. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.